The testing window for level 1 CFA exams opens in just about a week from the uploading of this video. First and foremost, I want to wish the best of luck to anyone who is sitting for this exam in the near future. I think it's one of the coolest accomplishments that you can work towards achieving in your career. But, at least within the finance industry, it is also one of the most difficult things you could try to accomplish. So here are the very important steps that I took in the final week before each of my three CFA exams to make sure that I was able to pass. Now I'm sure at this point you're well aware of the importance of mock exams. They are the best way to get exposure to a diverse set of types of questions throughout the CFA curriculum without picking and choosing random ones from blue boxes or EOCs or practice tests. Mock exams also can help you work on setting your pace for the CFA exam. Candidates typically have less trouble being able to answer all the questions in the allotted time slots that you have relative to levels two and three, but it can still be beneficial to replicate some of the exam day feels. But it's very important to keep in mind that we may very well be talking about the last seven days that you have to prepare for this upcoming test. And mock exams, especially if you do them right, can take a lot of time. Specifically reviewing all the questions that you got wrong during that mock exam and what the correct answer is and what you should have done differently to get that correct answer so that you learn the material and can get it right the next time around. Realistically, if you're still doing three hour study sessions, you're not gonna be able to get in more than one and maybe two mock exams in this final week period. And that's okay because hopefully you've done several other mock exams in the three weeks prior. Now, if you're someone who's not working, say you're a student and you have summers off or whatever the situation may be and you have 10, 12, 14 hours a day to a lot towards studying, you may be able to get in four or five mock exams in the final week. Just make sure it works with your schedule. To that point, I do think it is very valuable to be able to get at least one day off. At a minimum, I would want to get one day off of whatever my schedule looks like before the exam day, and that's just going to be a rest day, but we'll talk about that later. Ideally, you could get the entire week off before the CFA exams. I was always able to take off three days before, so I took off a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then took the tests on a Saturday. For me, that worked out really well. I would spend the Saturday and Sunday taking the mock exam, Monday and Tuesday reviewing anything else I got wrong and making sure I knew all the answers, and then Wednesday and Thursday, very importantly, memorizing formulas, which is what we're going to talk about next. Now, even though that replicating the exam day feelings can be a beneficial factor of mock exams, I only utilized one single mock exam in that way. That is sitting down for a six hour period of time and answering all the questions. But since I took an entire month before the exam just to focus on mocks, for each level, I ended up doing 12 to 16 mock exams as a part of the preparation. So the vast majority of them, I was really using them more like a cue bank. I was not timing the whole thing. I did not have all the formulas memorized. So I was going back and using cheat sheets to fill in the variables to certain algebraic equations. And for the most part, I answered them in like 10 to 20 question blocks. With level two vignettes, I would do six to 12 question block. And after I'd answer all the questions, I'd go back to the answers, score myself, see how I did. And then at that point in time, learn from the ones that I got wrong. Once I was confident that I had learned everything about why I got those questions wrong, I moved on to the next block. You can see that I didn't use these like real tests. And that reflects my opinion on mock exams, which is that the value in them, which is very high by the way, comes not from so much replicating the exam, but rather in teaching you more and more and more content. I've recommended this in plenty of videos in the past, but in your last two study days, which for me was a Wednesday, Thursday, I always wanted to memorize all the applicable formulas for my upcoming exam. I have called this formula memorization process the secret to passing the CFA exams, and I truly believe it is. While it may not be the number one most important factor, that would probably be time spent studying to being able to pass, it is the biggest differentiating factor, in my opinion, between two candidates who are equally well equipped, one of them getting a pass and one of them getting a fail. The one who memorized all the formulas is probably gonna be the person who had success. Now this formula memorization process that I'll speak about real quickly here, I didn't come up with it myself. Full credit to Mark Meldrum. I watched him talk about this same process before I took the level one exam. I followed it to a T. It worked very well for me and I did it for levels two and three. You might have to tweak it just a little bit based on how you and your own brain work, but for the most part, here's what you should be doing. Every single formula that you used throughout your studies to answer any practice question. That's gonna include blue boxes, EOCs, practice tests, third-party test prep providers like Wiley or Kaplan, or any mock exams, any formulas that you needed to answer any of those questions, you're gonna to have to memorize. All of that information is fair game and could potentially come up on your test. Now, to get all these formulas, what I did was throughout all my studies, I was putting a bunch of stars next to any formula that got utilized in my note sheet. So that in the final week before the test, I went back through the notes that I've taken over the last nine months, looked at every formula that was utilized for any question, and then put 
put them all in a clean, neat formula sheet that I use to memorize all those Epical formulas with. If you bought a package from Kaplan or Wiley, they have formula sheets that you can use too, so feel free to study off of those. If you want access to the literal formula sheets that I used and memorized to study and pass each level of the CFA exam, you can see them available on my Patreon. Link is in the description below. Again, the formula sheets I made are just everything that I utilized throughout my studies before each exam and not formulas that actually did or did not appear on any of the real CFA exams that I took or will or will not appear on any CFA exam you take in the future. Just a disclaimer there. The point is, you need a really good set of formulas to work off of when you're doing this whole memorization process. The first step is that you're going to handwrite every single formula that you have uh, compiled throughout your studies 10 times. Literally, write them out, each one, 10 times, the whole formula. Your hand is gonna get extremely tired. After you write out maybe eight or 10 formulas 10 times, you're gonna go back through them and make sure that you've actually memorized them. Put them in your medium term memory. Side point here, this process is very time consuming, which is why I was really glad to get three days off before the CFA exam so that Wednesday and Thursday, I was spending about 12 to 14 hours each of these two days doing this formula memorization process. Okay, step two was after like 10 of them, make sure you actually have them memorized. I guess step three then would be go to the next 10, recite them in your head, make sure you have all those memorized. Any that you're not able to recite in your head, get a secondary sheet of paper and rewrite each one of those like five to 10 times. Many, many hours later, after you have handwritten every single formula that you might need for your upcoming exam and confirmed to yourself in your medium term memory, either by using flashcards or covering a piece of your sheet of paper or whatever you need to do, that you have these formulas down pat, at the end of each day, you're gonna take one to two hours, for me this is like eight or 10 p.m., and do a recollection of the entire sheet again, just in your mind. The reason you're doing this is to point out to yourself which formulas you don't actually have totally memorized yet. This next point may be obvious, but it could be worth saying for some people who potentially are taking a looser definition to the term memorization. But when I say memorize the formulas, I mean literally know them all cold. Like someone could on exam day, pick a certain formula out from your note sheet and you're gonna know exactly what it is right away. You need it literally memorized cold by heart, all of them. I know this is not an easy thing to do, but if you do it well, you are drastically going to increase your chances of passing the CFA exam and come on, you've come all this way, you've been studying for three or six or nine months. I'm just saying you really, really have to go hard in this memorization process over the final two study days you take, especially for the level one exam. This is gonna be a worthwhile exercise, just trust me. The very last day before your CFA exam, for me this was always a Friday. Again, I wasn't working, but I also was not studying at all. You should take this day totally off. It should be a rest day. The only thing you should be potentially working on this day is making sure you have all your paperwork right to get to the exam center and be able to check in and register and sit for your exam. Make sure you have sharp pencils, maybe double check the batteries in your calculator, just all the logistics things that you'll need the next morning. One of the reasons you should take this last day off is to remain relaxed and stress-free though, so don't worry about all these little logistical things, just make sure you have your passport, your exam ticket, whatever else it is that you need to check in and register and sit down to take the test. The other main reason you're taking this day off completely is to give yourself a break. Your mind is gonna be able to perform better, recall information easier the following day when you're taking the exam if you gave it a break the day prior. I know it can be tempting to just do like 20 practice questions or run through your formulas once again, but I'm telling you it's just not gonna be worth the marginal benefit you could potentially gain if like one or two of the things that you studied in the final day actually fall on your exam and you get one or two more points. It's more valuable to have your mind totally rested. That's gonna help it recall information that you studied like three or four or six months ago that is also gonna be able to help you take this test. It's just more valuable to have your brain fresh. Now the next day, the morning of the exam, definitely go back over your formulas again. Make sure you have them all memorized cold. For me, there were always 10 or 12 formulas that uh, I didn't have quite right, so I would take 30 minutes, maybe 60 minutes before the test and refresh my memory on those. Logistically, the test center where I was taking the exams was about two hours away from my house, so my wife would drive me at like 5 a.m. that Saturday morning in the middle of June, which was nice because I would sit in the passenger seat and take one of those two hours studying these formulas again. So she was my transportation and I was able to get some like distraction-free time to just get mentally focused, but make sure I was up on these. I wanna mention that a lot of other folks will recommend to you in the final week before a CFA exam to review ethics once again. While this isn't a bad recommendation, it's not gonna hurt you to review ethics information once more before you sit for the test. I don't think it's the optimal way to spend your time. Obviously, it's gonna be focused on one section, ethics, rather than doing a mock exam and studying all the formulas like I'm talking about. And the very nature of the ethics information in the CFA curriculum to me is a little bit 
bit random. You really don't know how certain ethical rules can be asked about or interpreted, and they're probably not gonna just copy and paste a bunch of blue box questions from the curriculum, so it's not like you're gonna be able to memorize the answer to certain ethical questions. I don't know how to explain this all that well, but other charter holders will agree with me on this. Ethics is just a wonky topic to study and be able to study well, so sure, you might give yourself a couple extra points if you were to study some material and then very similar content is actually tested on your exam, but I'm still going to recommend to stay away from reading through ethics content again. The last tip is still a very important one, and that is to go into the exam with the right mentality. There's really two things I did here. Number one, I approached it like I was going to war, like this was the last thing I was gonna do in my entire life. I was a warrior who had been preparing for battle for months and months and months in the case of the level three exam, like three years, and there was nothing that was going to stop me from being at peak performance that day. Along with that, I made sure to have a lot of fun with it. So I know those two things sound relatively different, and if you're able to kind of mesh them together into one headspace, then I think you'll feel pretty good going to the exam room. I know I did before each of the three tests. If you've been following the channel for a while, you've definitely heard me say this before, but honestly, you've spent so much time preparing and you've done such good work in memorizing a extremely vast amount of information that you should appreciate the position you've put yourself in going in on exam day. Maybe you haven't scored 70% on a mock yet. Maybe there are areas on a certain topic that you didn't quite feel like you mastered yet. Almost everyone's gonna be in that boat. I think you need to put those things aside Put yourself in the best headspace possible, be very positive, give yourself very encouraging thoughts, and recognize how amazing it is that the human mind can learn this much and recall this much information all on one day. As a prepared CFA candidate going to the exam, you may know more financial information top of mind than 99.999% of the world, and that's a pretty cool spot to be in. So enjoy utilizing this awesome opportunity you've been presented with and the really impressive amount of work and preparation you've done up to this point. Go in like a well-prepared warrior would into a battle against a fierce adversary that they know they need to win and they know that they can and will win. And that's it, thank you for watching the whole thing. If you could like this video and subscribe to the channel, both of those help me out very much, and as you know, I always appreciate them. Thanks for watching.